Hey, good evening, good uh, afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. <laughs> Depends. <laughs> it's a truly global world. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to um, uh, Rotter Digger for seven months. Unbelievable. Thank you very much again. Amazing. So I hope everybody's uh, doing well. Here we are for the uh, uh, Thursday weekly event. It's actually quite convenient because, um, you know, it's a short flight, uh, evening time. There's no much uh, uh, going around uh, otherwise. So Thursday is good. Uh, it seems to be a decent amount of traffic, which is nice. And uh, yeah, we're gonna fly uh, to Dubai on the what's supposed to be the Qatari 1018, which actually is on the 787. And I could have done it on the 787, of course, but um, yeah, the plan initially was for a 777 flight, so uh, we'll do it on the 777. Although it's uh, it's done apparently uh, uh, on the 787, and it's kind of resumed uh, quite uh, recently, from what I understand. So. So yeah, sh should be a good one to do. 46 minutes, as you can see here from uh, the flight plan, if I can display, yeah. Uh, 46 minutes, about 6.4 tons of fuel for the for the flight itself. 5% uh, contingency, like always, which is actually more or less uh, only 5 minutes. So it's not too much on a short flight like that. And uh, yeah, about f just under 15 tons for the for the whole uh, for the whole flight uh, taking into account of course the diversion fuel and also uh, uh, the last uh, 30 minutes uh, yeah that's uh, that is Doha this one here uh, that's the supposed to be the kind of more recent airport uh, the new uh, international airport uh, there used to be another one which I think now is I think it's still open, but uh, not really um, used very often, so. So, yeah. All right. Hope uh, everybody's ready for this uh, quick flight again. It's uh, quite intense, up and down. Flight level 190 should be a good one. There was uh, a bit of rain on the forecast uh, in uh, Doha here, as you can see. But that was uh, earlier on. It's amazing, 6,000 meters light rain. And uh, a little bit gusty as well, uh, but it's just about finishing now, so... Yeah. I don't think it's uh, too wild at the moment out there, so <laughs> should be good. Excellent, otherwise nothing really to, uh, to notice on the flight plan, so... I'll jump in the flight deck, uh, call uh, FS to crew like always, the good old uh, FS to crew. And we'll do the PF events, let me unmute it. Hi Captain, how are you today? I'm great. And we'll go to the walk around. Now for the walk around. Beautiful. Cool, so she's muted. Ethan. Yeah, OTHH uh, is the new uh, Hamad, and then uh, OTBD is uh, the old kind of uh, Doha airport. Yeah, that is uh, that is correct indeed. Let uh, me arrange that a tiny bit. Cool. Excellent. Um, so we'll uh, switch on the Adiru, arm the uh, emergency lights, and uh, then there was actually. Um, a message from the delivery controller um, to amend the route. <laughs> Every time I fly around this part of the world, there's the route amendment. Uh, but I can see, like you know, maybe uh, the reason for the amendment. So it's uh, it's fair enough. I'll uh, I'll amend the route. It's uh, it's no big deal. Um, so we'll start with the uh, Iden page triple seven three hundred uh, ERG ninety engines. There's another Pratt and Whitney, which we saw kind of. Exploded <laughs> the other day in Denver. So uh, these ones are like G90 engines. So those uh, aircraft can still fly. They're not grounded. I heard in the UK, for example, that they were like um, 
uh, banning uh, all the Pratt and Whitney at uh, 777s uh, to fly over like uh, UK airspace, for example. So uh, these ones are good. I think I heard that actually the the Pratt and Whitney um, uh, engines on the 777, the triple sevens only for like United. I think uh, apparently there's a couple in uh, South Korea and Japan as well. They're not. Um, there's not a lot of them basically, so I don't think they affect the triple seven so much. And what you have to realize as well is that the um, uh, the engine and the uh, aircraft itself is kind of different. So. Uh, it doesn't mean that the aircraft is unsafe. It's more like the uh, the engine. Obviously, there was a major problem with the uh, uh, with those uh, Pratt and Whitney uh, engines, but uh, the aircraft in itself is uh, is fine. <laughs> so we are reassured. <laughs> That's good. Right. Uh, so yeah, um, new Iraq today is the time of the month. <laughs> time of the month to change the rack. So the new uh, basically navigation database 2102 just uh, fresh today and uh, that'll take us into the 25th of uh, March. Right, um, then uh, we'll put the origin airport Doha and then take the GPS position for the uh, initial position. Cool. Then I'll do the root request. Oh, there's a discrepancy there in the numbers. Why is it giving me root request? Hmm. I'm having a bit of a brain wave here, I have to say. I don't understand why it's giving me the the uh, NGX root for some reason. And then there's a generic thing. Hmm. Yeah, I'm having a bit of a brain fart there, if I may say so. I don't understand why it comes like this. I've never seen that before, otherwise, I don't know. Anyway, we'll request the root and then do the uh, the amendment for the for the controller as well. It's one of those things, eh? You do, you like, you know, use the simulator and see like certain things or think you have to see things a certain way and then uh, something different appears. It's weird. Anyway, we'll uh, load the route. The uplink is ready and it's loading now so I can clear the message. I had uh, quite um, a nice message uh, the other day on the uh, YouTube channel about the uh, old. FMC uh, tutorial, which uh, I did, pff, I don't know, maybe five years ago or something, uh, which uh, the uh, the viewer said, oh, it was very well explained and everything. I was uh, I, I was uh, pleased and uh, touched to uh, to read such a comment. So I'm sure he's not around here, but thank you very much. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. Hey, thank you for the uh, raid, a uh, 330 fun. Thank you very much. Welcome, guys. If you uh, wish to stick around, we're going to do a quick flight to uh, Doha, 45 minutes, 19,000 feet. Should be a good one. Full ATC coverage on that sim. The Frenchies are there. <laughs> he caps flight. Hey, Adrimo, what are you doing? Good, uh, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well, sir. Thank you again for the for the raid. That's the that's the second time. Go and uh, pay a visit as well to uh, a 3:30 fan. I think it's uh, it's a French uh, stream, but if you want to uh, practice your French a little bit. Oh. Bravo, Captain. Huh? Oh, we oui, were all 6409. Thank you. Shut your face, Henri. The um, the uh, the alert as well is actually uh, um, this uh, French Canadian thing where they play around and that's that's a good thing. Hey, uh, Dreamo, thank you very much for the uh, follow. Welcome on board, sir. 
So yeah, 19,000 feet today. Negative, Captain. This is not 45 minutes should be a good flight. Be Big crab, thank you very much Sounds for the follow. Sounds a wheel right now, Captain. Mibu 2. Uh, what is your question, sir? Thank you very much uh, for the follow, guys, and uh, 330 fun, yeah. Thank you again for the for the raid. Well, uh, we'll have to try to arrange a little uh, something one of those days. I'll uh, I'll try to pop in. I'm I'm not really um, on this the rest of the time. You know, I only come on uh, on Twitch for like uh, the the broadcast itself. I don't really uh, kind of hang around too much. Depends sometimes, but uh, most of the time I don't. So I'll have to uh, pop in and say uh, hello at some point. Uh, Mibu, thank you very much for the uh, follow, sir. Hey, you want to come? Thank you. Adrimo, thank you. Yeah, we'll do our best. I think it's going to be a good one. Looking forward to that one. I um, should be good. It's a short, uh, intense flight. No time to uh, to get uh, bored on this one. It's uh, literally up and down. So, oh. uh, right, the flight number here will continue. QTR 1016. I had to change the call sign because the uh, call sign was already used today, so you can't. Uh, uh, we can't uh, connect if uh, the call sign is already used, then you can't connect to that sim, so. Uh, Mibu 2, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would speak. Uh, I mean, I've always done the, um, uh, the stream in, in English, so. Uh, I feel like if I start like speaking in French and kind of, you know, even like splitting between the French and the English, then I'm kind of losing a little bit, you know, the the audience, so to speak. Oui, je voulais juste dire que si je commence à parler un petit peu en français, après on, on perd un petit peu l'audience uh, qui comprend pas le français. Donc si je parle un petit peu en anglais, après en français, de nouveau en français, en anglais, bla bla bla. Uh, après on perd un petit peu le uh, le fil des événements, donc uh, j'essaye de le faire uh, la plupart du temps en, en anglais. Quoi. Bon, on peut en parler un petit peu en français uh, de temps en temps, mais je veux pas non plus trop uh, uh, me lancer en français. Donc c'est c'est pour ça que je le fais en uh, en anglais. Quoi. Depuis le début que je fais ça, je le je l'ai fait en anglais. Quoi. Donc bon, l'anglais pour moi ça me dérange pas. Quoi. Et uh, et puis bon, plus de plus de personnes com comprennent euh, l'anglais évidemment que le, que le français quoi. Donc le français ça après ça le ça le met un petit peu hein, ça nous fait hein, ça cible un petit peu trop spécifiquement une certaine audience quoi. Donc voilà voilà. <laughs> so yeah, just explain them once again that, you know, if I do it in French only, it kind of targets only a specific audience which I kind of you know don't want to ostracize the uh, uh, the audience who's uh, who's been with me from uh, from the beginning, or at least for quite some time now, so uh, who's obviously been uh, following in English. Caps flight. Thank you very much for the follow. So yeah, we'll try to uh, to stick to English. I know it's not always uh, easy for like non uh, speakers, but Roger, Roger. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll stick to that. <laughs> Pas mal. Uh, Captain uh, AIZ, I'll send you the uh, uh, standard uh, reply. So, yeah, I, I don't mean to be difficult once again, it's just good for like kind of privacy. I'm not going to kind of uh, shout about, you know, oh yeah, I'm playing for so and so. And I don't want to be seen as well as some sort of representative or whatever, so I kind of uh, uh, keep it uh, on the low side, low key here. Cool. Uh, so the route is actually taking us to. Uh, what did he give me? Oh, it bull, so we can replace. But you remember one thing. Recrawl, thank you very much for the follow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for the follow. 
If you have any questions, then please let us know. We're just trying to, uh, I'm you back know, the walk around. Everything looks good. share a little bit of uh, fun, a little bit of uh, aviation experience, knowledge, whatever. So, if uh, I'm not here to play, like you know, to be a monkey or whatever, <laughs> um, we're just trying to have like a bit of uh, educational, you know, but entertaining uh, broadcast. Captain Australia, good day. What time is it for you? Oof, it's quite early, no? Oh no, no. Ah, doing well, or like always. Uh, doing fantastic. I hope you're doing well as well. I hope you are. Uh, as uh, Conti said the other day, that uh, everybody is remaining uh, positive and uh, testing negative. I thought that was. I, I like that one. It was. Uh, it was an amazing phrase. <laughs> There you go. On the way to the top, exactly. Uh, getting there. Right, like always, I'll reject the um, uh, the uh, link here for the performance. What will be nice for the update, which I believe is still due, uh, unless I missed something, but uh, we're still waiting uh, for the uh, for the update for the triple seven here, will be to be able to kind of um, confirm the the data for the uplink for the performance uh, uplink so that uh, you don't have to reject it because here every time the reserve is is kind of uh, random and the rest of the information as well is not correct so it'll be nice if we can uh, kind of uh, insert somewhere maybe kind of link it with uh, pfpx or something like that so that you can then insert the uh, the correct uh, performance initialization they are uplink uh, but yeah that's that's something hey Ralba 1110 number 20 amazing yeah working your way to the top I think the maestro uh, strato is is well ahead so he's uh, uncatchable <laughs> right uh, where's my flight plan here so seven tons as the reserve so as i showed uh, a few minutes ago uh we've got uh, 3.6 for the uh, fuel to go to the alternate so the fuel to the alternate starts when you uh, go around that minima and then uh Guys, can we start boarding now yes thanks yeah you go around you climb to uh some sort of like cruise level for the diversion it doesn't have to be very high it can be Three, four thousand feet if the airport is uh, right next door. Virtual pilots, thank you very much for the follow, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Ooh, oh, we oui, oui. and, uh, and then the approach into the diversion airport. So that's the uh, alternate fuel, and then uh, the final reserve, which you know is the last uh, 30 minutes, which uh, then is a uh, Emergency uh, situation, basically, so that's not uh, fantastic. All right, uh, one nine zero one twenty as the cost index, and uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that for the moment. Oops, I went too quick there. Uh, we'll change that to one thousand. Not that anything is gonna happen. And then three thousand here. Cool guys, excellent. Um, let's call uh, ATC for the clearance actually. Clearance, clearance, so at least we are sorted out. Uh, we don't need to uh, kind of uh, re amend. So 120375 is the uh, uh, delivery. 120875. Yeah. I've got my pen. Yeah, here it is. Ready to copy. Uh, Doha delivery. Uh, good evening. Uh, Qatari 1016. Uh, Charlie 11. Uh, ready to copy. Good evening, you are clear to Dubai. 
flying by the Alpha One Echo departure at altitude 7,000 feet in Squawk 2667. Uh, clear to uh, Dubai, all sem uh, one echo departure, uh, 7,000 feet and squawk 2667, Qatari 1016. Qatari 1016, route back right, information delta is current, tune H1015, contact ground, frequency 120.225, bye. 120.225, QNH 1015, Qatari 1016. So 1015 we have... That's set, and uh, the score is two six six. Oops, two six uh, six seven. Cool. And now in the FMC, we can set the uh, the departure. So three four right, and it's the Alsem one uh, echo. Yeah, that's correct. We can go to the route page there, we can see the runway. And then uh, Alsem 1 Echo with no discontinuity is good. Uh, then for the departure, we'll check with the chart once again. So as you can see here, we start uh, straight ahead to uh, Soken, 2500 feet or above here, this waypoint there. Then we go to uh, Dembo, which is uh, 4000 feet. So theoretically, I mean, I'm you do need to level off at 4000 feet by that point and then continue the climb after that. Uh, but you need to be at Dembo 4,000 feet. Uh, so if, uh, for example, in the climb, he said initially uh, climb 7,000 feet. If in the climb you reach Dembo um, before, you know, uh, you do need to level off at 4,000 feet and then continue the climb. So that's something to bear in mind. So theoretically, you need to set uh, 4,000 feet here. Uh, then we've got uh, what's happened there? Hold on. I've lost the chart. Oops. Oh yeah, here it is. It's back. Yeah, then after Dembo it's uh, Ukila, so 6,000 feet or above. And then uh, Labov, which is uh, 7,000, which is now the, uh, the hard altitude again. And after... Um, uh, Labov, then we've got uh, direct to Alsem, uh, 44 miles, which is uh, correct. So, once again, you know, as I said before, P3D Love, thank you very much for the follow, sir. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to the channel. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, then uh, please uh, feel free to ask. Oh, yeah, no, that's. Uh, the joystick, good old joystick with the uh, thrust levers uh, forward. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Shouldn't be like this. <laughs> well pointed out. It's a good uh, sense of observation. I'm impressed. <laughs> that's good. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, departure like set in the FMC. So like always, check the uh, the departure uh, chart and then make sure that what's on the chart is in the FMC that you are flying the correct thing. I know I go on about it all the time, but it's, uh, it's quite important. Uh, all right, so we load the winds, like always, it gives us a sample of uh, levels, which is good. And then the forecast page, we can uh, load the uh, uplink as well. Oh, oh yeah, here it is. So in, in, in this instance, it's a little bit useless because three levels are already above the cruise. But it's always, you know, those levels that are given by the uh, uh, by the airplane. So just have to live with it, I guess. Now, right, we don't need to touch program page, uh, progress page, I should say. I am ready for the checklist. Yeah, if the controller says climb now 7,000 feet, then you can disregard the 4,000 restriction. 
But if uh, they don't say anything, then you're supposed to uh, level off at 4,000 feet, cross the waypoint, and then continue the climb. So uh, that's why, I mean, as I was explaining, it's a little bit ambiguous all the time when uh, you have those restrictions on departures because you never really know what uh, the, uh, the controller expects. But theoretically, yeah, you are supposed to, uh, uh, to level off. Unless you get the the uh, uh, the phrase uh, "climb unrestricted," so obviously with no restrictions. Uh, otherwise, climb now. Climb now is more like um, is more like a UK thing. Um, for like kind of internationally speaking, it would be kind of more like unrestricted than uh, climb now. Climb now is more like uh, a UK thing. Uh, I find. The Alpha 1 Echo Departure, so altitude 7, oh, cool. The uh, Southwest 4494 P3D, cool. That's good. Clear to Dubai, uh, via what uh, what uh, route are you flying? Cool, so I'm waiting for uh, P3D answer. Uh, 234, that's the distance on the flight plan that we cross check. Um, and we've got a total distance of 299 because, of course. Oh, AJ32 X ray, thank you very much. AJ, thank you, sir, for the follow. So, yeah, on the flight plan today, it's a little bit longer because the arrival is very long, so that's why there's more distance here at the moment because the arrival is not in the FMC, then it just like gives you the, the route straight to the. Uh, uh, reference uh, point for the airport, so which obviously makes it uh, shorter. KPBI to KBWI. I know that KBWI is uh, Baltimore, but K KPBI, I'm not sure, to be honest. <laughs> That's so much I know. Um, so, progress page 234 is good. We'll do the root copy onto root 2 and then back to root 1. Uh, the FMC com page, there's no more uplinks, and yeah, we can leave it like that. Cool. Let's do the boarding, I think. Uh, yeah, well, I'm good with time. That's alright. Passengers, we're gonna board 45. Otherwise, it's gonna take forever. And what we'll do is close the doors as well. Very often they use the uh, they use the uh, R5 and the R2 door there for the for the catering. So the right side very often of the aircraft on the ground for the services is more for like services so the basically the food all the uh the cleaning stuff um, and then on the left hand side very often it's the uh it's the refueling a little bit well the refueling it depends and of course boarding the passenger you never really board passengers from the from the right side it's always from the left side that's uh oh palm beach nice Cool. Alright, uh, then we'll check the uh, uh, the FS panel first. The FS panel actually now is uh, pretty much uh, in good shape. We've got 1015 uh, set as the QNH. Um, the rest kind of remains as standard. Flight director comes on and the uh, runway heading. Uh, is uh, oops. Let me check on the uh, EFB. Oops. Three three six. Cool. And then we've got the four thousand feet for the uh, initial climb. Then we'll check the oxygen. Today we're not flying very high, so. 19,000 feet wouldn't be uh, too much of a problem if we have to uh, descend quickly. Uh, on the PFD there, the primary uh, flight display, we've got Toga Toga because the flight director is uh, on now. 
and the flag director has an unshaded here. We got correct QNH, so it's all good. And uh, the no V speed flag there is because the takeoff speeds have not yes, been uh, entered. The aft left door for catering if fuel is being loaded. Yeah, that can happen. It's true, actually. Um, because sometimes it depends a little bit also on you know what what side of the aircraft is accessible. If there's a lot of cargo being loaded as well, then um, maybe they don't have the space. Or so yeah, for the for the catering as well. Sometimes from the left, that's uh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, because very often when I do the walk around, you know, you've got to kind of slalom in between all the trucks and, you know, the f the fueling, the uh, catering and the cargo. And you've got to kind of uh, be careful. Of course, you're on the uh, on the ramp with like um, a high vis jacket so that you're more visible. But you've got to be careful because sometimes, you know, they reverse or whatever. You got to watch out. We don't want to claim for industrial injury. <laughs> yeah, take your time, uh, P3D. Take your time. Alright, and D is good, and everything here is in the default position, so that's alright. You can hear in the background the boarding. We'll brief uh, FS to crew. Reduce thrust, flaps 5, 1500, 3000. That's it. We've got the fuel. Uh, we briefed. Let's do the pre flight checklist then. Pre flight checklist. Pre flight checklist. Oxygen. They stayed 100%. Tested 100%. Flight instruments. Heading uh, 248. Ultimator 1015. Heading. Altimeter one zero one five. Pre flight checklist complete. Ha, uh, let me see the checklist actually. Because for some reason it's not ticked the boxes, and then every single time it's going to go back to it. So, excellent. Where was I? Yeah, we're just going to enter the performance. Let me re. Let me find the flight plan. I've got so many things open on those screens. It's uh, it's mad. Cool, excellent. So zero fuel rate today is two thirty two point nine. So what I mean by uh, zero fuel rate to understand a little bit, you know how uh, the uh, the end of the the FMC uh, programmation is. And also, actually, what I refer to uh, zero fuel weight is um, is basically the weight of the aircraft with the passengers, the cargo, the catering, the crew, of course, um, but without the fuel. So that's why it's called zero fuel weight because there's no fuel at that stage. Um, so basically, yeah, zero fuel weight. It's everything on the aircraft except the fuel. Um, now we got 14.8 tons of fuel that gives us uh, gross weight or like a current weight of uh, 247.7 tons which is kind of average weight it's it's not too heavy yeah. yeah now p3d I kind of uh, keep a little bit in the background I don't because with the headsets then it's kind of uh, in my ears you know um, and after a while, it's uh, you know, I get uh, noise uh, fatigue. <laughs> uh, right for the assume we'll go 74 degrees. Uh, it's gonna give us 85.5. Uh, I don't have the performance, but because the takeoff weight is less than 250 tons, then 74 should do the trick. Um, then uh, engine out 1000, we'll accelerate at 3000, reduce the thrust at 1500. Uh, we'll go for flaps 5. The CG from PMDG, like always, is uh, forward today. 
so the trim is back seven units and then we'll take those speeds which usually are not too far off so cool uh, we've got 250 190 so the speeds are 164 Airnav Vinav is armed, so we're gonna follow the Airnav track for the departure route and then the vertical profile as well. Uh, the runway track is set and uh, we've got the uh, initial altitude 4000 feet. Alright, um, still boarding and then we should be good to go. Not sure how long we have. Uh, about half of the passengers. Uh, hopefully it's not going to take too long. Yeah, I kind of uh, reduce a little bit the um, the background sounds, you know, because as I said with the headsets, after a while it's kind of... That's a lot of noise, you know, so... So yeah, I try to save my little ears. <laughs> I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> Cool. Um, otherwise, pretty much set up. The next frequency said ground one two zero two two five. Okay. One two zero two two five. We should have our passengers coming in. Hello, Paul. Alright, so the APU is running, so we can disconnect the ground electrics. A uh, ground flight deck. Please disconnect the ground equipment. Right, seven passengers to bond. Almost there. I think in the timing there, five minutes to go. Okay. Oh, the the loading is done. That's good. I think they closed the. All the cargo doors are closed. That's good. So just the passengers, really. Happy days. Very often it's the other way around. You're waiting for the cargo, everybody's on, and then you're always waiting for the cargo. Harry, how are you doing? Welcome back, thank you. I hope you're doing well uh, this evening. We are flying uh, quickly to uh, Dubai from uh, Doha. 19,000 feet, 45 minutes, up and down. That should be good. Actually, I don't have uh, on the triple seven. I don't have the um, uh, noise cancelling headsets because we kind of um, the way that we kind of fly is that we have the um, uh, the headsets with one e one ear cup, like kind of off the ear, so that we can hear each other a little bit better. Uh, because there's no um, uh, there's no intercom function when you uh, plug in the headsets, so. Uh, unless you kind of fiddle with like an elastic and stuff, but anyway, I don't do that. I don't like. I don't like to uh, to do that. Um, so yeah, we don't have the intercom function, so we don't really use the headsets because otherwise, if you have like uh, noise cancelling headsets, then you can't really hear each other I talk. You know, so Porky Harp, way, thank you for the follow. Who knows how to fly a plane. So yeah, but on the seven three seven where we had the um the intercom function when you know you plug the headsets you've got the noise cancelling headsets and then you can hear each other uh, properly because obviously it's connected and then you can enjoy the uh, noise cancelling which is uh, which is nice of course 
All right, I think yeah, we're uh, good here. Uh, Orb driver, yeah. thank you. Thanks. We are sinking. We are sink. Hello. Driver, this thank you very much for the follow. Host, God. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Thank you for the follow, sir. Right, so uh, we've got all the doors closed, which is good. The bridge will get removed. Before start procedure. Oh. Before start procedure. Are we clear to pressurize? Yes. Okay. We can assume I've not asked him, but. Yeah, no worries, uh, Porky. Thank you very much for uh, joining me here on Twitch. I, I know there's uh, there's quite a few people. Um, a few is maybe uh, uh <laughs> it's may I think a lot of people actually. Uh, we don't really transition from uh, the kind of uh, YouTube side to the to the Twitch side, unfortunately. Um, I mean, um, so I I'm glad when uh, when a few of you kind of you know. Do the the it. transition. It's not so much to do the transition as kind of to to kind of follow both, you know, in parallel, which uh, which is uh, which is good. I do. Uh, I have posted a couple of uh, comments, you know, about the the stream here, but uh, uh, on uh, on the YouTube channel, but very few people kind of uh, come across to uh, to Twitch as well, so. A bit, of a, it's a bit of a shame, but uh, mayday, mayday. we can't, uh, we can't force people. Two low flaps, thank you. Hello. Hello. This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking, we are sinking, yeah, yeah. What are you this one makes me laugh so much, actually. <laughs> it's, uh, what are you thinking about? <laughs> Languages, huh? How uh, you can uh, uh, mix things up. All right. Negative. Uh, and the trim. Seven units. Seat one A. Oh, that's the best seat. Right seat one A. That's the best seat. That's a very good username. Welcome, sir. Thank you for the follow. Uh, we are route uh, from uh, Doha to Dubai. Well, not quite en route yet, but almost there. All uh, right, so we're set up here before start checklist. Before start checklist, flight deck door closed and locked. MCP. Set and checked. Takeoff speed. Set and checked. CDU preflight. Completed. Completed. Trim. Set and checked. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Before start checklist complete. I do have to give the standard replies because if I'm st if I actually give the correct uh, response to the checklist challenge, then uh, the voice recognition doesn't pick me up. So then I'm gonna spend like forever, you know. I'm at ground. Uh, good evening, uh, Qatari one zero one six. Request push and start. Good evening. Push and start approved facing south on Echo 1, QNH 1015. Uh, push and start approved to face south on Echo 1, QNH 1015, uh, Qatari 1016. Alright, uh, so prepare for push and start number 5. Do you wish to start engines? No. Uh, Echo 1. Where is Echo 1? Oh yes, the first one to face south. Yeah, so nose to the left. Cool. Hello, Captain. We're ready for pushback. Yeah, I'm ready as well. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah, confirm all checks are complete and we are clear to pressurize hydraulics, which was already done. And then, yeah, we are ready for push to face south on Echo 1. 
Yeah, release back and break. Back and break released. The time. He's got a bit of uh, sorbomitis there. He's going like pilot. Uh. Uh, so we said nose to the left. So option two. Back and break release time uh, four two. A little bit late, huh? I have to go for TN biscuits for like on time performance. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Start sequence is one and then two. Start the left engine. So the start switch goes to start and the fuel control switch to run. I hope he's gonna push. Oh yeah, the tug is starting to move a little bit to the left, then push to the outside and then obviously the aircraft kind of moves around. Amazing. Oh, it's nice with the uh, company in the background there. So these are the good engines, not the Pratt and Whitney. A bit of a puff of smoke in the in the back here. That's uh, that very often happens when the engine starts uh, spooling up, and you know during the start. Uh, you always have a bit of a pff, puff of smoke. Right, so the number one is good. Start the right engine. So the start switch comes to start. And the fuel control switch I will put on to a run. The uh, N2 increases, the oil pressure increases on the right engine here the n1 increases and then when we get to about 33 percent on the n2 here the fuel flow is going to start to uh, increase here it is and then the three main parameters kind of uh, increase proportionally to each other so the uh, the n1 is always lagging Followed by the GT and then by the N2, which leads the way. Back and break set. Your for good start. Cool, so we've had uh, two good engine starts. The red line on the GT uh, gauges there is gone. And the start uh, switch up here is uh, kind of uh, clicked back into the normal position. So yeah, you can uh, dismiss the... Uh, uh, the engineer on the ground, the mechanic, we got uh, two good starts, clear to disconnect all the equipment and we'll see you on the right with a pin. Bye bye bye. Flaps 5. Flaps 5. Then she's gonna... Miguela, thank you for the follow. Oh, Miguel A350. <laughs> thank you. So we'll check the flight controls, make the control column bigger. Up and down, left, and right. And then when we see the the pin, where is he? Is he gone? Oh no, he's still connected underneath. November 7, Bravo, startup is approved, uh, report when ready for taxi. Oh, the actual uh, RPM is, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I wouldn't know what the actual RPM is, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't think I've seen the numbers like written down in the, uh, uh, in the FCOM. Why is he not disconnecting? Oh, I've not confirmed.
Where's the dude? Is he gone? I don't hear it. Yeah, I took a. I didn't press the button properly for the to release the to confirm that we had good engine starts, but he's very slow to to uh, release everything. Speedbird five four zero, how are you doing, sir? Ça va, ça va, merci. Yeah, the APU. I mean, uh, you don't really notice the the main the main one we notice is the um, um, is the engine. You know, when the engine starts, there's a bit of puff, and I mean we do see it because of the of the ground uh, movement camera there, because obviously you've got the view over the back of the engine. So very often at the back of the engines, as I said, when we start the engines, you can see the poof, the puff of smoke, which is. Uh, uh, which is quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a recurrent thing, it happens quite often. I actually need to get rid of the uh, ground movement camera, because in the simulator on there, I kind of uh, eats the performance of the computer. Right, so he's gonna walk away. You can check the rudders as well. That's good. Check the recall. Yeah, cool. Before taxi checklist. November seven, uh, Bravo. Before taxi Are checklist. Are you able to accept intersection Alpha to runway three four right? Checked. Flight controls. Checked. Clear. Before taxi checklist complete. Yeah, I got. Uh, <laughs> I said check too early there because I was saying check to recall because, and that's pretty much the Boeing checklist, you know, for the for the before taxi there, and uh, the rec at uh, the recall I do actually uh, answer as here she says like uh, anti ice auto recall checked and then she kind of you know ask for the uh, uh, for the other responses but uh, yeah anyway. Got spark mode for the 747 for X plane today. Looking forward to the first long haul in the 747 this weekend. Oh, that will be amazing, yeah. So it's going to be Charlie, then that's good. Charlie, all the way to Alpha 2 on 34 right, November 7, Bravo. Clear left. Clear right. Yes, are you able to accept intersection Alpha 2? Indeed, I can, yes. November 7, Bravo. Oh, that's a long one. About what, 10 hours Manchester to Las Vegas? 9, 10 hours, something like that. Good luck with that. <laughs> I can't believe I did uh, 7 hours and a bit the other day, it was crazy. Uh, ground uh, Qatari 1016 request taxi. Qatari 1016, are you able to taxi via Echo 2? I firm uh, Qatari 1016. Qatari 1016, taxi to holding point Alpha runway 34 right via Echo 4, Echo 2 right on Charlie. Uh, taxi to holding point uh, Alpha 4 runway 34 right via, confirm via Echo 4. Echo 1, correction, and uh, left, Echo 2, then right, Charlie. Okay, so taxi uh, via Echo 1, Echo 2, Charlie, uh, to ordering point uh, Alpha, runway 34 right, Qatari 1016. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, not this one. So as you can see here, uh, Echo 1 will have to kind of cross over to Echo 2. And then Charlie, all the way to uh, Alpha there at the end. Happy days. So we said clear left, clear right. So we've got the taxi light on, the runway turn off. Let's go. Emirates 554, you can taxi to holding point Alpha, runway 34 right via Echo 1, right Charlie. Oh yeah, I do remember like um, 
uh, watching that uh, uh, I used to have that, uh, I think I still have it, I need to kind of dig it out. Uh, second for Qatari 1016. Qatari 1016, disregard, just continue taxiing now onto Echo 2, right Charlie. Echo 2, right Charlie, uh, uh, Qatari 1016. Qatari, I hope to tango with you uh, for Charlie 9. So that's Echo 2. Qatari 8, Hotel Tango. Uh, taxi via Echo 4, San Charlie 11. One one. I'm not sure what uh, uh, Charlie one one. Uh, the yeah, Emirates is going to turn. He's on Echo 1, which is obviously a parallel taxiway. Normally, you can uh, taxi like this in parallel with the wing tips. It's not an issue. There's enough uh, wingtip clearance. The the lines are wide apart, so. Uh, yeah, that's probably from Afsim. I can't remember where I picked up the the scenery, but uh, yeah, that's probably from uh, Afsim. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Alba. Right, so that's Delta there. That's not the one. No, that's Charlie. We're going to. Right, so we had the cabin ready, I think. Before takeoff checklist. Yeah, I was saying I did that uh, DVD of the Virgin Atlantic 747, where they fly from uh, uh, London to uh, uh, San Francisco, I think. That's quite a good DVD because the guy, who, uh, the captain, who explains a little bit the flight and everything, he's, he's quite keen. And uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting uh, DVD to watch. Oof, he's already very far. Emirates 554, you can contact Hamad Tower on 118-525. 118-525, uh, shukran. Allah yafak, bis-salamah. Asalma. Shukran, Abibi. Alright, and that's Charlie, happy days. And there's a 321 landing, beautiful. Let's have a look, oops. You'll forgive the taxing. Very nice. Ah, oh, nice. Nice landing. Check this out. Obviously it's night time now, but I've got the daylight settings, of course, so we can see a little bit better. Nice. Once again, I'll <laughs> give that taxiing. Yeah, the scenery is a little bit complex to uh, install because there's like um, there's like a couple of uh, components to it, and it's a bit of a pain, but. 118525 Qatari 1016 Shukran F1 break in November 7 Bravo contact Hamas Hold it, Alpha Emirates 544 Line up runway 348 Line up and do it Skip for right Right, so we did the before takeoff checklist Yep, good so far, so good. It's amazing, eh? We got uh, delivery, ground, tower, uh, possibly directly to uh, Bahrain uh, control. All the positions, it's amazing. Really enjoy that. Tower, good evening, uh, Qatari 1016, taxiing to uh, holding point runway uh, 348. Qatari 1016, uh, hold that Alpha. Hold that uh, Alpha, uh, Qatari 1016. 
Maybe traffic on final, though. Not that we can see for the moment. But this guy is gonna take off. Oh, amazing. Let's watch. Uh, behind the uh, departing uh, 777, uh, line up and wait, uh, uh, runway 34 right uh, behind Qatari 1016. Yeah, there's that phraseology where you have to say line up and wait uh, runway 3, 4 right behind. You know, you got to kind of re-emphasize the behind. No, <laughs> I twist the, the, the joystick as well. I don't have the pedals, no. You have to realize as well that in the aircraft we actually taxi with the, the tiller there. So you don't taxi with the rudder pedals. Uh, the rudder pedals are really for uh, to manage crosswinds, uh, engine failures, but uh, they're not really used for taxi. On a, on the Cessna 152 or whatever, on a small aircraft, you do use the rudder pedals to taxi, but not on those aircraft, because the uh, uh, the range of the Clear for takeoff uh, 34 right Qatari 1016. Runway entry procedure. Check. Clear on the approach. Okay. Start the timing. On runway 34 right. This guy holding short. Take off. Thrust set. Hold. Let's go. And gently rotate up to about twelve and a half. Climb. Gear up. Gear up. And then we should settle down about V2 plus twenty, which is about the case now. Maybe slightly more thrust ref. We have speed. Check. Autopilot. So yeah on rotation. Uh, about three degrees per second in the rotation. Obviously on the simulator here it's a little bit difficult, but and then try to uh, get to uh, V2 plus uh, 20. You can get between V2 plus 15 to V2 plus 25. Uh, Bahrain on uh, 126 decimal uh, 75. Uh, Qatari 1016, bye bye. So you see we're actually reaching 4,000 feet way before, so you do have to level off. Flaps 1. Flaps 1. Flaps up. Speed check, flaps up. Can you confirm direct low van, uh, Yeah, you see you reach uh, 4,000 feet way before Dembo, so you do have to level off. Um, direct lag mass, uh, just 701. Uh, Bahrain, uh, good evening. Uh, Qatari 1016 on the uh, Alsem 1 Echo, maintaining 4000. Clear 
Sorry, one, did they one at six bar and radar, could they identify climb unrestricted flight level one at nine and zero? And restricted climb, fly level 190, uh, Qatari 1016. So unrestricted, 190, so we press the button to clear all the restrictions here. And if I press again, 6000 disappears. And then if I press again, 7000 disappears. And off we go. Oh, Captain ALZ, yeah, that was amazing. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you for that. That was great. I'm not sure actually why this departure has all those uh, restrictions because, you know, very often then. Uh, there's somebody uh, sending a message about the birthday again. <laughs> yeah, very often then on the on the departure, then they kind of clear you to climb, you know. So. Uh, the only thing I noticed is that we don't have. Yeah, we don't have uh, UAE control on. Oh, that's a shame. You see, we have leveled off for for quite some time, and uh, we're still like six miles to Dembo, and we're already almost at nine thousand feet. So. Well, I think we are following each other then, uh, Captain ALZ. Uh, we'll probably uh, be uh, close together on the arrival on the other side, which uh, well, should be nice. He should give some work to the to the air traffic controller. We'll keep the speed to 50 until the turn is completed. Not that it matters a lot, but just so that we accelerate in the correct direction instead of accelerating in the turn. Otherwise, we're gonna pull some G's. <laughs> so 10,000 feet, all the lights come off, except of course the strobes. And since we are turning as well at the moment, we'll keep the seat bell sign on in the turn because I mean, you don't want people like to uh, to get up when the aircraft is turning, you know. It's gonna be a uh, transition altitude at uh, well, 13,000. Uh, we reset uh, standard. Climbing uh, for level 190. Close the speed window now and accelerate to uh, 320 knots. Say again, altitude please, November 7, Bravo. 230. 330. Seatbelt sign, auto. Seatbelt sign, auto. Negative, flightable 230, 230. Ah, it's alright, I mean, as long as you enjoy the, uh, the aircraft, it's the main thing, you know. A few little clouds. Nothing showing on the. Uh, uh, can we uh, maintain uh, flavor 190 on reaching uh, Qatari 1016? Roger, uh, climb and maintain uh, flavor 190, Qatari 1016. Yeah, it's a short flight. There's no need to climb because otherwise we're gonna we're gonna descend straight away again. Yeah, because last time we had uh, rain in uh, Bahrain, uh, but today there's a few clouds, but no rain. Yeah, the happy days emote. <laughs> 
happy birthday. They like to uh, wish happy birthday here. <laughs> Sorry, seven mic whiskey on my frequency. Cool. It's climbing very yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's Doha in the background behind. What will be the damage today? Oh, it's already on. Amazing. Cool. I'm glad it's working again properly. Yeah, I can keep the rate of climb, it's okay, we're gonna, there's no traffic above. Otherwise, of course, you've got to kind of level off gently by using vertical speed. Alright, so we got minus 152, minus 145. Let's see if I can uh, pull out a nice one today. Good evening, Bahrain. Qatar inbound 018, flat level 4000, inbound for catch. Uh, let's change. Let's change the cost index maybe. Let's put 40. Ah, nice. No, too much reduction. Maybe 100. Yeah, that's good enough. Decimal 69. <laughs> so you see, though, that here with the cost index, at least with like a small number, um, there's a variation on the on the speed. So the the greater the cost index, the the greater the speed. The other day on the long flight to uh, to Paris, the cost index 250, as you know, they don't really uh, uh, give us uh, a realistic speed, but here. The change between 120 down to 40, back up to 100, you could see the speed kind of uh, change up and down. So, uh, so at least with like small numbers, it kind of gives you something sensible. You know? Oh, Ralba minus 147, you're kind of squeezed in the middle there. Oh, living life dangerously there. <laughs> Always keeping the environment in mind. <laughs> of course. Of course, of course. Uh, Dubai approach is in, but uh, no UAE. We still have about 50 minutes to the end of the event. So I should be alright. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, uh, top of descent in just over 80 miles. So once again, short flight like this, don't have much time to, uh, to play around. So we'll check the recall, we'll check the... Ah, I never did that one. Ah, yeah, because I got distracted with the uh, after takeoff checklist. <laughs> no. Check. After, after takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist complete. Better late than never. Cool. Uh, so then, for the arrival. Let me dig out the charts. Mainly the uh, uh, the star. Actually, I don't know which arrival we're gonna get, so depends on the arrival uh, controller. 
Okay, uh, green uh, green jet. No worries. I know the uh, the internet can be uh, difficult. Wink, wink. <laughs> It's not always easy. Uh, anyway, I think I'll go for certain arrival and then the, if there's a change, then there's a change. Doesn't matter so much. So, because once again, we've not been uh, through the halfway point. Ah, okay, uh, Bahrain is covering all the way. I'm not sure, I think it's... Um, um, no, I think it's... I think it's uh, one hour... One hour ahead. Or one hour behind. No, do, uh, Doha is one hour behind, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, uh, so Dubai, 3 zero left, Uldot. I will go for the Vuteb 3 Charlie. So now I can pull out the chart. Car 071, decent flight level 3, well 1, 0. So this chart is actually a little bit... Uh, there's a lot of information, but basically we start uh, here at Vuteb, where we've got 12,000 restriction, 230 knots. Then we go to uh, Lovok, 11,000 feet or below and 230 knots still. Uh, then we've got the Delta Bravo 5 to 9 here. 8,000 feet, that's correct. Then we've got Patit, which is at uh, 7,000 feet or above and 210 knots. Uh, then we've got the on downwind here in the Delta Bravo 730, 7,000 feet or below. Then uh, the Delta Bravo 513, yeah, Gergo Vela Ridev, Delta Bravo 508 is 185 knots. Then we got 507, 506, 505, 4, Uldot, they're all in there. And then if you let me find the ILS charts. Da -da -da -da. Yo, yo, yo. Then from uh, Uldot. Uh, yeah. We got Uldot 2000 feet. Uh, then Setpo, Setpo Modus runway 30 left, and then for the go around Delta Bravo 707 to Egnot 210 and 3000 feet. So it's all in there. Happy days. Uh, minimize uh, 260 down there. Confirmed by arrival. 260 on the minima. So we're set 260. Uh, what's the weather? Three one zero at eight, can H one zero one two twenty four degrees. Not bad. So one zero one two. Uh, 
Um, the VRF. I was thinking, ma'am. I, I was a little bit. Uh, my mind was wandering there. <laughs> 7.5 on the fuel uh, on arrival. Uh, 2.33, that's a landing of about 240.5. It's quite a heavy landing. Uh, Flap 31.46. I uh, will go for auto brakes uh, 3, I guess. That's it. So we've got uh, VRF set here, flap 30146 to fly uh, uh, 151. The minima for the uh, ILS uh, Cat 1 approach 260 are set. 1012 is preset. Um, we've got the IFSD here, which is already uh, set. We've got an auto brake and everything in the FMC we went through uh, the waypoints on the legs page to make sure it matches the. Uh, Arrival chart, it's all uh, the same, so that's good. So the FMC is all checked. Uh, we've got the descent information here with the forecast as well. The frequency for the ILS is uh, in the database, that's the correct frequency 11.3. We should get the um, Uh, India Delta Bravo Whiskey as the ident and as you can see the uh, uh, the frequency up here 11.3 uh, is there 299 inbound so that's that's all correct uh, that's so good, good evening, cool I know uh, the uh, the auto brake actually is um, is to try to make uh, the most uh, convenient exit on the on the runway so if uh, auto brakes 3 gives you the required distance to vacate the runway at the desired exit uh, then that's that's more or less how you would um, decide you know uh, what auto brake to use obviously the uh, the ultimate goal is to stop before the end of the runway but uh, here I mean it's uh, it's a 4,000 meter runway I think yeah, 4,300 meter on runway, so I mean, stopping is not an issue, of course, but you want to make like um, a desired exit, so the, the auto brake setting will give you the, uh, the desired uh, exit. I think in some of the more like um, modern um, Airbus uh, aircraft, I think maybe the 350, the 380, they've got like something similar to auto brake, which is called uh, brake to vacate. So they can uh, set the the braking to, uh, uh, you know, to have like braking exactly to make the aircraft slow down for a particular exit. Uh, direct to uh, Vuteb, uh, speed three two zero knots, uh, Qatari one zero one six. Uh, Dubai arrival 124 decimal 9 uh, Qatari 1016 bye bye Right so direct to Vuteb 320 knots that's pretty much what we have but he said 320 so we'll fly 320 And in the descent Maybe we can set 320 knots as well. So cruise 320 and descend 320. Good. And contact Dubai 1249. Qatari 7 Mike Whiskey turn right heading 270 degrees. Cleared ILS runway 30 left. Report established. Yeah, BTV is great because it's uh, designed to, uh, you know, to uh, to have the the braking work exactly for a particular exit. Okay, 
Uh, Dubai, uh, good evening. Uh, Qatari 1016, maintaining flight level 190, Boeing 77 Whiskey. Request descent. Qatari 1016, Dubai arrivals identified, cleared route 3 Charlie, expect ILS runway 30 left, information uniform. Expect uh, ILS uh, 30 left, uh, VUTEB uh, 3 Charlie, uh, request descent, uh, Qatari 1016. Qatari 1016, descend altitude 10,000 feet, level by VUTEB, maintain 320 knots. Uh, descend altitude uh, 10,000 feet uh, to be leveled by uh, VUTEB, uh, maintain 320 knots, uh, Qatari 1016. Right, let's descend then. Yeah, 10,000 feet by VUTEB. So we're gonna have to make it a hard altitude. Hold on. So set 230 knots and 10,000 feet. I'm not. Ah, oh, come on, PMDG. 230 slash 10,000. Ah, uh, it's because of the uh, of this restriction here. So I'll delete that one and try to set it now. That's it. Yeah, we didn't take the 10,000 because there was an 11,000 uh, restriction after. So for some reason, the computer goes crazy. Yeah, our bus is a flying machine indeed. Now, because what happens with the uh, with the auto brake is that uh, oh man, uh, speed three zero zero knots, Qatari uh, one zero one six. So five five four maintain three zero zero knots. Set three hundred knots here. Three hundred Set the Q and H. Qatari seven Mike Whiskey contact tower one one eight decimal seven five. Bye bye. Yeah, the uh, the auto brake gives you a distance when you calculate the distance, uh, the landing performance with the auto brake. It gives you a distance, so you kind of have to work out, you know, the distance to the desired exit. But all the uh, auto brake gives you is a distance. Then it depends on the landing itself. If you land the aircraft like textbook, then you should make the distance that uh, the auto brake is giving you. It's even a little bit conservative in the calculation. But if you float, for example, then the uh, a little bit, then the auto brake is still going to give you the the distance after the touchdown, so to speak. You know, to kind of simplify things, if you see what I mean. Whereas the brake to vacate will, I think, try to. Uh, it probably works with GPS and knows where the aircraft is and will even if you land a little bit deep then it will try to uh, to to make the uh, the exit you've uh, you specified if that makes sense hey p3d welcome five, back five, five, four, descent via the star altitude eight thousand feet speed two nine zero knot eight thousand feet speed two nine zero emerge uh, five five four uh, confirm uh, star speeds for Qatari 1016. Qatari 1016, cancel star speed, maintain 300 knots. Uh, cancel uh, star speeds, uh, maintain 300 knots, Qatari uh, 1016. Ah, okay. Uh, so if we can cancel the star speeds, then I'll do 10,000. Not 100,000, 10,000 like this without the. And then what I'm gonna do is 250 below or 300. No, uh, 250, yeah. Uh, below. I don't know, 7,000. So 250 below 7,000 and keep 300 knots. Happy days. So now in the legs page you've got the 10,000 feet but then 300 knots on the speed which is what we want to do. A decent checklist. It's a little bit late.
decent checklist. Stand by. Descent checklist. Recall. Checked. Sorry, Notes. one zero one six. Descent by the far altitude eight thousand feet. Maintain two nine zero. Maintain uh, two nine zero knots and this altitude eight thousand feet. Qatari uh, one zero one six. Eight thousand feet. Checked. Auto break level three. Landing data. VRF is uh, one four six minimums two six zero feet. Yeah, it's not gonna get down. Uh, set and checked. <laughs> Completed. Descent checklist complete. Approach checklist. Approach checklist. Altimeters. One zero one two set. One zero one two. Approach checklist complete. Yeah, of course we can look outside. November 7 Bravo, um, checking in flight level 230, direct November 7 Bravo, to my arrival, identified exact ILS, runway 3 is your left, cleared route up 3 Charlie, to make We're not looking at the controls anymore, just flying along. Zero left, and uh, fly uh, route up 3 Charlie, uh, November 7 Bravo. <laughs> Oh, this is the 300 ER. I knew it's flying on its own there, so it's good. And uh, QNH 1012, November 7th. I'm going to fly 54, speed 25, zero knots. You can see the, the world islands. You know those uh, mine made uh, islands which kind of all together look like a map of the world. Okay, it's leveling off uh, 8,000 feet. Yeah, you've got those uh, raked, uh, raked uh, wing, uh, well, wing tips there. Yeah. As uh, as I always say, a good way to uh, kind of tell the two apart as well is the number of doors, because this one has uh, uh, five doors on each side. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, whereas the 200 only has four, so from the outside it's a good way to kind of uh, tell them apart. The 300 of course is a little bit longer as well. Huh? And now the scenery kicks in a little bit. The airport, I think, is somewhere. Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, we have visual request, visual approach. <laughs> the streaming community, bravo. Good evening, approach Qatar 1018, flight 250, ready for descent. Oh, he's the, he's the person who had my call sign. I knew the call sign is. Is the actual uh, uh, real flight uh, call sign? So. Exact ILS zero three left via Wutem three Delta information uniform ready for descent. Qatari one zero one six speed two three zero. Did you call uh, Qatari one zero one six? Speed two three zero. 
Two three zero knots, Qatari one zero one six. Qatari one zero one eight, descend off. Yeah, got one zero one eight, one zero one six. Call sign confusion. It's uh, that's something uh, that is tricky, you know, when all the call signs sound the same. Um, it's easy to get confused sometimes. That scenery is amazing, huh? I like it. They obviously need to uh, update a little bit the airport layout, but uh, yeah. Qatari one zero one six, descend via the star altitude six thousand feet, maintain two three zero knots. Uh, descend via the star to altitude six thousand feet, speed two three zero knots. Qatari one zero one six. All right, via the star. There's no really any more restrictions. That was the 7,000 all below there. Oh yes, so we've got to cross uh, the Delta Bravo 530 below 7,000 feet. And then uh, descend 6,000 after that, there's no more restrictions, then it's kind of uh, uh, descending via radar. Cool. So if you fly into uh, and to Dubai, most of the time, it's kind of a good idea to sit on the right side of the aircraft because that's the right uh, window there. And as you can see out of the right window when you're on downwind... Well, it depends what downwind you do, but uh, because if it's the other arrival, you do the other downwind. But, uh, but if you do this arrival, then the downwind uh, on the on the right downwind gives you the view of uh, the, the airport and, and the city and stuff like that. Which is, uh, which is quite nice. Right, so we make 7,000 feet, no problem. I'll actually make the rate of descent a little bit less. Just like the real thing, indeed. <laughs> My ability to fly the sim doesn't my ability doesn't reflect my ability to fly the aircraft. Somebody, I, I, I this altitude three thousand feet, speed one nine zero knots, Qatari one zero one six. So three thousand feet set. Uh, I think he wants to expedite us. Flaps one. Speed check. Flaps one. When there's a big, when there's a big change of uh, altitude like that, I means that you know the uh, controller wants you down basically. Although the traffic ahead is turning uh, just after Gurgo there, so now we can see him here. Flaps five. Speed check. Flaps five. Can you repeat for a minute? Right, so we'll use a little bit of speed brake. Very good. Uh, we now have the uh, ILS identification in the Delta Bravo Whiskey. Which is uh, what we were uh, looking for here in the Delta Bravo Whiskey. But that's the right uh, ILS ident. I need to open uh, the. Uh, P I need to open the PFD on the on the right side here because this one, uh, as you know, with PMDG is is kind of. Uh, uh, it's not op you cannot open it basically. Oh, what did they open in the middle there? Qatari 1016 descent altitude 2000 feet. Descent altitude 2000 feet, Qatari 1016. 
2,000 feet set. Sorry, right heading uh, 210, uh, Qatari 1016. Alright, so heading select 210. Hey, Southwest 4494, thanks for the uh, private message here. Uh, 11875 is going to be the next frequency. And uh, uh, I. Uh, uh, I'm trying to do several things at the same time. Uh, right heading uh, 270 degrees, clear dial uh, approach 30 left, we'll go uh, Qatari 1016. Uh, where are we? Modus. So what I'm gonna do is take Modus, uh, pull it at the top of the legs page now, do the interception course 2, Modus. And now you can see I have the uh, runway uh, center line. Uh, extended from the runway via modus I can arm the approach mode and now you've got like the uh, FMC tidied up so we kind of uh, bypass the whole arrival and now in the FMC you've got the correct information uh, that's the uh, that's Captain ALZ there ahead 1624 Qatari 1016. Flaps 15. Qatari 1016, uh, localizer established, 30 left. Sorry, 1016, contact tower, 118.75, bye bye. 118.75, uh, Qatari, 1016, bye bye. Gear down. Gear down. Flaps 20. Speed check, flaps 20. Tower, good evening, uh, Qatari, 1016, uh, 30 left, 7 miles. Hello, Dubai Tower. Plan to vacate left, Kilo 8. Continue approach, number 2. Continue approach, uh, plan Kilo 8, uh, Qatari 1016. Flaps... Flaps 30. Flaps 30. Speed check, Flaps 30. Did I forget something? Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Landing checklist complete. Checklist complete. Uh, Miss approach is uh, 3,000 feet, yeah. Cool. Sorry, I will play the song after because there I go a little bit. Uh, approach table, good. Right. Flight director, flying manually. Qatari 1016, wind 310 degrees 8 knots, runway 30 left, get land. Clear to land, uh, 30 left, Qatari 1016. Emirates 554, uh, Yeah, on final approach, it tends to have a bit of, uh, the nose is a little bit further up than the aircraft because it's definitely a little bit too, uh, too much nose up. Approach 
approaching decision point. Chick chick. Approaching minimums. Minimums. Continue. Minimum. One hundred. Right, so one hundred. Fifty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Speed brakes up. Reversers normal. Cool. What is this? Is this fog? No way. Really? Manual braking. That was interesting. Hey, the maestro is back. Congratulations. Uh, kilo 8 is further down. Oh, that was too much braking. That's uh, kilo 8 coming up, you know? Why is this sign? The maestro is back. <laughs> cool. That was an interesting um Qatar A1016 vacate Kilo 8 after vacating taxi Juliet 2 hold Juliet 2 Bravo. Uh, vacate uh, Kilo 8 uh, Juliet 2 hold uh, Juliet 2 Bravo uh, Qatar A1016. That was an interesting uh, weather phenomenon over the runway there. I don't know if uh, they're trying to simulate a bit of mist or, or whatever, but uh, that was interesting. Uh, that's gonna be Juliet 2 there. Uh, that's it, cleaning up. Qatari 1016, contact Dubai, ground 118, good there. Uh, ground uh, 1835, uh, Qatari 1016, bye bye. 1835. Hey, uh, Simple 12, thank you very much for the follow. You can be mine. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome to the end of the stream. But Welcome nonetheless. I uh, ground, uh, good evening, Qatari 1016 on uh, Juliet 2. Qatari 1016 to my ground, very good evening. Taxi Juliet 2, Juliet, stand Bravo 8. Uh, Juliet 2, Juliet, stand uh, Bravo 8, Qatari 1016. Okay, so Juliet 2, Juliet. So basically looking at the uh, EFB. Uh, Juliet 2 here, and Juliet, and then Bravo 08, which is, uh, that's Bravo 9, so probably Bravo 8 there. Cool. I know where I'm going. Excellent. <laughs> A good landing is a landing you can walk away from. So... Happy days. <laughs> cool, so we gently taxi in. Nice palm trees. <laughs> no damn advertising. Uh, uh, hold on. Five, five, four, taxi, Juliet, right. No damn advertising at some uh, some tree, but if uh, you know uh, some tree, that's uh, the tower I lives in. That uh, tower here, that's where he lives. If you're a fan, oops. Kind of time to go back to the taxiway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. Thank you for the uh, ATC, like always. 
that's why I like to kind of uh, come back here from time to time because uh, uh, it's always uh, it's always good fun. Has he not started the APU? He's cleaned up the aircraft. Oh, yeah, it's because I didn't uh, brief him yet. Uh, he switched off the transponder as well, which he shouldn't have, but it's okay. Uh, Bravo 8. Oh, it's good. That's only Bravo 21. <laughs> Got a little bit of time to go. I'm getting distracted there, like showing you the tower for like uh, Sam Tree and stuff. It's. Via Kilo 1 1 cross runway 30 left, four short 30 right. Via Kilo 1 1 crossing 30 left. Bravo 19, Bravo 18. Oh, yeah, must be past the tower, so yeah. Fair enough. Hey, my PPL, good evening. All oh, right, so. Now I'm thinking, how are you doing sir? Welcome back. Thank you very much for the uh, subscription again, my PPL, thank you. This is not a good idea. It's time to buzz the tower. Hey, thank you very much, I'm Sim and Taylor as well, thank you. Oh. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Thank you very much for the uh, follow and uh, my PPL for the subscription. I did watch your video on um, uh, trying to lift the gear up and down, you know. I, I did watch that, that was, uh, that was really good. Uh, where's Bravo 8? I'm Bravo 11. Uh, gate Bravo's number six, Bravo eight. No. Oh, Bravo eight here. That's Bravo eight, huh? Yeah. Lights and doors. Cabin crew disarm doors and cross check. Where's the uh, all the ground personnel? Yeah, yeah, doing uh, doing well, doing well. Well, by 11.10.38 watchers, you're all very welcome. Th Indeed, love is in the air. A lot of uh, uh, sub uh, gifts from uh, <laughs> from Rotterdam. Thank you, sir. You're a legend. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to uh, uh, the sub for uh, uh, Brazuta, Slog Dog, Sebayu. Um, to virtual pilot to Tori FR. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. And uh, I was uh, looking for the uh <laughs> the aircraft is still running, but we have to play the song. So I'll play the song because it was so nicely requested. Uh, where's the song? Here it is. It's a little bit late because we've already landed, but. Are you 
Simple Stwell, what are you doing? Good, uh, good evening. Ah, the landing is okay. I mean, <laughs> as as uh, as I always say, a good lang a good landing is a landing you can walk away from. So, as long as we don't go like bounce and do something silly, then <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Thank you again, uh, Roger Digger, your legend, man. Thank you so much. Um, five uh, five subs. Uh, I think it said uh, ten subs in total. Uh, legend. Yeah, ten uh, ten subs uh, offered on the channel. Amazing. Thank you so much, sir, and uh, thank you to all the the, the viewers as well. You uh, you offered the uh, the sub too. Thank you so much. Cool. Uh, so yeah, here we are in uh, uh, sunny Dubai. For some reason, we don't have the uh, the ground stuff, but doesn't matter. That's a little bit. Uh, the arrival bit doesn't matter so much. There's some body. Is it departing? Climbing? What is he doing? Yeah, he's climbing away. Cool. That's that. Let me put the sound back in. Excellent. Hey, Oak Driver 101, thank you very much for uh, uh, joining me. Have a good uh, evening, a good afternoon, depending where you are. Uh, good night and. Uh, well, uh, see you next time, hopefully. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's um, Captain ALZ. Yeah, we're just uh, behind you, so I think your approach was uh, was quite nice as well. Around the corner, there on base leg, final three zero left. Uh, that was uh, that was nice. P three D. Thank you as well. Thank you for joining me today. Hope to see you again soon. Um. Yeah, we'll just um, you know try to um, to talk a little bit about aviation, kind of make it realistic, but at the same time without uh, you know taking myself too seriously. So here we are, we're just uh, having a, a bit of uh, a bit of fun and uh, in the process, you know, talk about simulation, aviation, have a little bit of music. <laughs> it's uh, it's good fun. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll hang around for the for the next few uh, minutes. If you have any uh, questions, anything you like to uh, to ask, um, I've uh, I've seen there's quite a lot of uh, comments about um, the triple uh, seven uh, accident or incident uh, last week or like a few days ago. So on the internet, there's quite a few uh, comments and a few. Uh, analysis um, as I said earlier on it's uh, the uh, the engines in question uh, are the Pratt and Whitney engines which there's not a lot of aircraft uh, equipped with uh, those engines and also what you have to realize is that the uh, the engines and the aircraft are basically two different things so if even if supposedly because that's not been established yet, but even if there's an, a problem with the engines, it doesn't affect, you know, the uh, uh, the airworthiness or the uh, uh, the safety itself of uh, of the aircraft of the triple seven. So, because the the aircraft, the airframe, and the engines are totally uh, uh, independent from each other. If you see what I mean, so so I wouldn't uh, worry about flying on a triple seven. <laughs> Far from it. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting to see what uh, what the inquiry uh, comes up with. You know, as as we discussed last time, you know, they got the uh, the failure and the fire at like about eight thousand feet AGL. You know, in the climb, came back quite quickly. Uh, possibly did the um, uh, the engine fire checklist, kind of uh, secure the engine, extinguish the fire. Hopefully. I was quite difficult to work out if they did actually manage to uh, extinguish the fire because you could see some at some point uh, the f the engine was uh, the back of the engine. There were a lot of flames and stuff. So, um, 
and then uh, probably run some uh, performance for the landing, either landing flaps 20, land uh, flaps 30, and uh, try to see. Uh, then there's a bit of decision making involved, you know, but the final result was good. They saved the day, so that's the main thing. So. Uh, the starting config, what do you mean by uh, starting config, uh, Albert? What do you mean by a starting config? Skyway uh, 1 Alpha, so it will be November right, Papa 3, left, Papa, stand, echo 2. Uh, turning left and uh, stand, uh, echo 2 for Skyway. Yeah, you've got, um, you've got to be careful, you know, what you're saying on uh, social media. That's, that's, that's another reason why I'm trying to kind of, uh, you know, uh, keep the uh, the airline and stuff like uh, separated and away from what I'm doing here. You know, so that's why I'm not talking about the uh, the airline and and stuff because uh, I don't want to associate myself. You know, with the airline, uh, I don't want to be seen as some sort of representative or whatever. Uh, what I'm doing here is is totally separate from uh, what I'm doing for work and stuff. So yeah. That's that's one of the reasons as well why I don't really say, you know, uh, who I work for basically. Oh no, I, I, you're, you're right. I do not st start at cold and dark. Um, before usually before I come on, um, I've got uh, PMDG set up here and I've got like a saved uh, setup. So I'll go to state load for the uh, panel uh, state. I'll go to state load and then uh, load the uh, oh. uh, load the uh, this uh, panel there, which obviously I had to save myself. But uh, oh, why is it's strange? I'm still connected to the voice on Vatsim. Disconnect. Ah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, I've saved the, the panel state there, and uh, that's before I come on, that's what I saved there. And then it's gonna load the panel state, which is, it's not cold and dark, obviously, but it's, uh, it's not too far from it because nothing is really, uh, it's just been powered up. That's the powered up state. Um, so, at that stage, the ADRU is still off, the emergency lights are still off. Um, it's only really the, the battery, the uh, electric, uh, the ground electrics which are connected, and the rest is kind of off, otherwise in the default position. Some of the switches kind of um, remain on all the time. For example, you know, the, uh, uh, the TAC here, uh, the IFE, cabin utility IFE, all those switches kind of remain on or auto. You know that the hydraulics at some point they get pressurized, so um, at that stage they are still off. Um, but like switches like the bleed there, like the uh, APU bleed here, they always kind of remain on. That's the kind of default position. We don't really switch these off, so, uh, or the window heat, for example, so. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't know if um, there's um, there's a way to kind of uh, pass that on. No, the the battery will come off when uh, the aircraft goes cold and dark. Uh, the battery will be uh, will definitely be switched off. Um, actually, for the cold and dark stuff, if you go. Now the aircraft is running on the battery and then you switch off the battery and it's gonna go cold and dark I suppose. Or oh, is there anything else? No, yeah, it's cold and dark. There's a supplementary procedure as I said before because we don't really do that out of memory uh, because the aircraft remains pretty much always powered up uh, but uh, to, uh, to get it uh, cold and dark uh, remove the the ground electrics there and uh, switch off the the battery. If we 
I'm not really sure actually how the cold and dark works because uh, now, I mean, I, I'm not really sure how you get access to the PMDG menu when the, the FMCs are like totally dark like that, when they are off. I know there's, um, there's maybe like a shortcut, but I don't know. You have to hold the menu button. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we can get rid of the ground connections. Let's see if it affects. I'm I'm puzzled as to why these two are still on. Let's see if I can call the um, if there's a state panel. I think there's a default called and dark. Yeah, here it is. Because when I did the cold and dark video uh, for YouTube, yeah, it, there shouldn't be any lights, and you see now the the off light at the generator is uh, is actually uh, off now. Cool. So now it's totally cold and dark. So yeah, I do invite you to go on the uh, on the YouTube channel to uh, to kind of have a look at the cold and dark. At the time, I got a bit of grief on that video. You know, some people said like, "Oh, there's a lot of uh, hesitations on your comments and stuff." So be it. But as I said uh, before, we rarely, rarely come up to a cold and dark aircraft because it takes a long time to kind of uh, fire back up. You know, so. Um, if the engineers have been working on um, on the aircraft, or they, they need the aircraft to be uh, powered up, but there's uh, there's definitely an attraction when you see like this the uh, the aircraft being totally uh, totally uh, off like that. And then we can try to put it back on, get the battery going. Uh, and then get the ground connections. And then switch these on. And now on the other end, some of the lights are coming on. But then it's going to slowly initialize. The clock comes on. Uh, the lights on the uh, MCP come on as well. The IFSD is starting to uh, to come up, and then one screen at a time. I think the FMC come, the two FMCs come on there uh, with the center FMC as well, and the transponder under something, the radios. It's all great gradual, and then the the displays will come on. There'll be like a kind of uh, testing sound as well in the background. It does those uh, config checks and stuff. P3D, yes, I do. I do. I'm uh, flying the triple seven. I think that the um, the way the uh, the powering up of the aircraft is simulated is probably quite realistic. It takes quite a bit of time for the whole thing to uh, uh, to be, uh, you know. Um, basically come to life and, and, and be uh, all powered up. It takes quite a long, long time. Now you see there's not been any progress for quite some time. The displays are still dark. I'm still waiting. I don't know exactly uh, how long it's going to take. But yes, just you know, just because we were talking about it, I guess it's good to uh, to kind of have a look at it. but. I'm not going to lose uh, sleep over that today. The overhead shouldn't change that much because uh, the lights that are on are like pretty much uh, what uh, what they will be later on, but uh, the display should definitely be on. Now it's picked up the is that time to synchronize the clocks are synchronized to GPS so now the the clocks have a time to uh, pick up the uh, the correct time obviously it's not 
the current time now and now the displays are on you can hear in the background the tick -tick 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 -tick. so that's testing the speakers the uh, config uh, warning system as well which we can see here config warning system uh, so at the moment we've got the uh, the ICAS message but then that should go uh, once the uh, the check has been done in the background yeah the aircraft now is pretty much powered up really so it takes a good yeah a good five minutes at least yeah you can see the config warning system is gone now so and then from there and then you can yeah, I think it's the real sound. As I said, we are rarely, rarely go through that uh, cold and dark procedure and then power up the aircraft. So uh, I've not heard it many times, but I do believe it's the actual sound that it does. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's always the same, I think. So. But yeah, at that stage, I think pretty much the uh, aircraft is powered up. Uh, it will take a little bit longer, of course, if you go with the APU instead of the ground power, because the ground power, as soon as you connect it, and then uh, switch on the ground power up here on the uh, overhead panel, then the the juice is uh, is connected, and the uh, uh, the electricity is in the aircraft, whereas the APU it takes about a minute to start. Uh, so it will take you know another minute, I guess, for the uh, for the aircraft to uh, initialize the whole uh, power up. But yeah, the uh, one of the conventions as well in aviation is that if you've got um, external power connected to uh, the aircraft, then you need to have the navigation uh, lights on. So the 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 lights at the wingtips, the the red and green lights, so red on the left and uh, green on the right. Uh, those lights here. You can see the red here, and uh, on that side, on the right side, the green as well. So whenever you've got the ground power, which we can see here, connected to the aircraft, then the uh, the navigation lights should be on, so that at least somebody from the outside seeing the the position lights or the nav lights can see that the aircraft is uh, is powered up yeah that's taken from uh, from ships indeed yeah 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 there's a lot of uh, crossover between you know aviation and um and uh, how can you say that um yeah ships and uh, the the maritime world yeah indeed boats ships yeah. Hey Lewis 100, thank you very much. Have uh, have a good evening. Thank you very much for uh, joining us again today. See you on the next uh, on the next one indeed. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, crossover between um aviation and the world of uh uh boats and ships and stuff. Yeah. Definitely. The the lights the you know the we get and the and the rank in in our epaulets you know it's it's a little bit the same the the captain of a ship or the captain of a plane you have the epaulet system as well the uniforms are quite similar um, the notion as well that the you know the the captain is the last one to kind of evacuate you know if uh, if we have an an emergency uh, well. It will be an emergency, but if we have an evacuation, then the captain is supposed to be the last one to, uh, you know, to leave the ship, basically, uh, which is also st something taken from, uh, uh, from boats and so. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, Rotterdam, thank you so much again for all the the subs. For first of all, your your own subs, but also the uh, uh, the five uh, uh, gifts. Uh, to other viewers that was uh, that was amazing so thank you very much uh we had uh, also a uh, taylor who uh, followed sam who followed 
my PPL, uh, five months, tier two, amazing as well. I uh, hope you're doing well, sir. And uh, I'll uh, I'll keep an eye for your uh, your videos and your updates on the on the TB uh, TB20. Huh? Yes. Um, we had uh, Simple 12, uh, Megan A350, Sit 1 Alpha, which is the best seat on the aircraft, <laughs> which is cool. Um, two low flaps, Oak Driver today we followed as well. Uh, Porky, Arp, AJ, P3D, Virtual Pilots, Ray Crow, Caps Flight, Mibu, B Crow, Adrimo, Roro, A330 fan for the raid. That was amazing as well, and uh, Rotterdam for his own uh, subscription renewal. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, joining me today. Um, I hope you uh, you enjoy the flight, short flight, but uh, uh, quite intense and always, you know, good ATC coverage. So that uh, <laughs> always uh, brings uh, a fair amount of fun and uh, realism to the flight. But uh, yeah, I'll keep you advised for the next one. Uh, I'm away again on Sunday, so um, I'm not sure. I'll try maybe tomorrow evening, but I'm not sure. I'll let you know. Uh, you know that with me at the moment, it's quite spontaneous. So I can't really plan too much in uh, in advance for uh, for the stream. So I'll uh, I'll definitely let you know, but it will be uh, maybe one or two hours before. So. Um, so yeah, have a nice evening, Brazuta. See you later. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, Ralba, thank you very much again for uh, for joining us this evening. You have a nice evening as well. Enjoy the 319. You're forgiven for flying Airbus. It's okay. I'll forgive you. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, in the meantime, uh, have a great uh, evening, a great afternoon. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you again. And... Uh, See you next time. Thanks.